Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and today I thought I would try and do my top 5 favourite Thomas & Friends engines. So, as you can see here from my Thomas & Friends engine shelf, yes, I do have a problem I think, but as you can see I have managed to collect at least most of the engines that Hornby & Backman have put out there relating to Thomas & Friends. Obviously it isn't all of them, there are still one or two that I haven't been able to collect, and incidentally if you know of any that are still readily available that you'd really like to see me review, let me know down in the comment section and I will definitely look into those. However, as I say, I've managed to collect most of them, so I thought it would be nice now to take a look over them and decide what my favourites are and at the end as a little bit of a bonus I decided I'm going to choose two models one is one that I haven't got that I'd really like to have and another that I haven't got that I really do not want to have that's going to be interesting to decide but first of all here we go with my top five and number five here he comes right now it is a he ready it is Oliver. Now this is interesting because Oliver I didn't think was a very good model. I thought he was far too expensive for what he cost and he's not that great a puller either. He's very very weak in fact. However even though it's not the best model it is one of my favourites. I just love him. Obviously I love the Great Western and I love the 14XX. That's this tank engine that he is of course based off. But also I think there's just something clever about it. You see how tiny his little face is there? Even though it's so tiny, it does have the working eyes, which I think is really impressive. And of course, he's also got an awful lot of character. So that's why he is in the top five. Might be surprising to you to see him there, but for me, he is one of my favourites. All right, let's take a look over the rest of the engines then, see if you can guess what the next one might be, although probably not because these are my favourites. The next one is not a guy, it's actually a girl, and here she comes now, it is Rosie. Now, I really like Rosie. I think uh, there's an element of comedy. I mean, I remember her face looking like she had chicken pox, which was quite entertaining to me, but also the fact that this is based on a USA dock tank, I like very much. Obviously, that's an American design, which you don't see very often, so I like it for its unusualness. But also the quality of the mechanism on this one is way better than any of the other Backman Thomas and Friends engines. Um, yeah, really, really good run of this one. And I reckon this is one of the few engines that will actually last a reasonably long time because it is so well built. So it gets a thumbs up for quality, a thumbs up for character, and also a thumbs up for the fact that it is sort of American based, which uh, you don't get very often in Thomas and Friends. So I really like that. All right, next up then, we have to hear from the man himself. We have to hear from Thomas. But of course, I have two different Thomases to choose from. I have this one here, which is the Backman Thomas, a bit newer, that one. And then this one here, which is the Hornby Thomas. Now, I wonder if this might divide people because a lot of people love the Hornby Thomas but also a lot of people really love the Backman Thomas for very different reasons. So let's quickly weigh up the differences. Well, the Backman Thomas looks a lot more like Thomas does on the TV show. It is based on the TV show. The Hornby Thomas looks a lot more like the Reverend Audrey's sort of drawings of Thomas based on the E2, of course. Now, don't give Hornby too much credit for that. I think that was sort of by necessity. It wasn't designed that way. It was just made using the E2 tooling, which Hornby already had to hand. But either way, it made a really, really nice model. Well, they're both great. I don't know which face is more realistic. There is a bit of debate there. However, I'm going to go for the Hornby Thomas. Uh, whether you agree or not, let me know. I'll put up a poll. My personal reason for that is that it does look all right, it looks pretty good, the face isn't too bad, and I do like the fact that it's based on the E2, but it's just the mechanism I love on this. It's got a really, really nice mechanism inside it, full bearings on the wheel set, and it runs really, really nicely. True, it doesn't have the moving eyes like the Backman one does, and if you prefer the Backman version for that reason, that is absolutely fine. It is very close, that one, but if I had to pick a Thomas, I think it would be just the Hornby one, but only by a hair. Okay, the next one is one that you probably won't expect, but it is one of my favourites altogether. In fact, we're up to number two now. I've been forgetting to say the numbers. So, my second favourite engine from Thomas & Friends is this little chap. It is, of course, Toby. Now, I just love Toby. I do like the J70 trams. I think they're very, very cool, but that's not really the reason why I like Toby. It's just his character. He's such a box, isn't he? He's got that lovely little face on the front as well, which is also square. I just love the way Toby looks. He's so unusual and he runs really well as well. This is the Backman version. Hornby did do a Toby of course but I don't have that so maybe that would be even more my favourite if I got one of those but as it stands I haven't ever seen a Hornby Toby so it has to be the Backman one for me but yeah he's really really cool. He wasn't that expensive. He's got the moving eyes and of course crucially he's just got so much character so I absolutely love the Backman Toby. 
So finally then, that brings us on to my very favorite Thomas and Friends model from Hornby or Backman. I don't think it's gonna to be too much of a surprise, but here we go, we might as well get it over with. It is, let's have a drum roll, shall we? <laughs> it is this, it is the Hornby Gordon. I absolutely love this. Now, it perhaps isn't quite as accurate as the Backman Gordon is in terms of the TV show, although once again, it looks a little bit more like Reverend Audrey's Gordon, obviously, because it is based on the Gresley Pacific, the A1 or A3, whichever you wanna call it, or the A0 in the Thomas Law. I just love this Hornby Gordon. His face is pretty good, actually. It doesn't have moving eyes once again, but it really captures the essence of Gordon, in my opinion. Also, he's just such a good runner. He is tender driven, which I don't particularly like, but there's a five pole motor in there. He's really, really powerful. In fact, in previous videos, we've seen him hauling absolutely loads of coaches up Gordon's Hill. He's really, really powerful. He's really reliable too. I've had him, I bet I've had him for three years now, and he's still just as good as he was when I first bought him. Yes, I love the Hornby Gordon, and I think he's absolutely full of character. So there you have it. Those are my top five engines from Thomas and Friends. Let me know what your top five are, of course, and if they're different to mine, that's even more interesting. Uh, let me know which ones you agreed with, which ones you didn't agree with. For now though, let's get on to my promised bonus, and that is which engine from Thomas and Friends I don't own, but would love to. So there's quite a lot of choice, but the one I'm gonna go for is the Backman Daisy, which has not been released yet, but it promises to be really, really interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, is it gonna have moving eyes? Well, the rest of the range did, so maybe it will. Second of all, it, as a DMU, it's gonna be pretty big. It's probably gonna be the biggest Backman Thomas and Friends character ever released, which should be very, very interesting. And finally, of course, it's a DMU. No Thomas and Friends character that I think has ever been released has been a DMU before. Maybe Hornby did a Daisy, thinking about it. Did they? I can't remember. But if they did, maybe it'll be the second DMU. But either way, the first from Backman. So that would be really, really interesting. Now then, controversial, a bit of negativity to finish with. Which character would I never want to own? Well, there's quite a lot to choose from. There are quite a few good characters, but there are also quite a few bad ones. Well, this is the one I choose. It is the Hornby Emily. Now, yes, what is wrong with the Hornby Emily? Well, there's nothing majorly wrong with it, of course, apart from the fact that it looks nothing like Emily did in the TV series. Hornby used their Dean single to make the Hornby Emily, which was a major mistake, of course, because Emily was never a Dean single, I don't think, at any point. She was, of course, a Sterling single. Now, the Dean single and Sterling single are quite similar in some areas. They do look quite similar on the upper part, but if you look lower down, you can see she's got no cylinders, she's got no outside connecting rods. She looks really, really strange. In fact, the whole front bogey area looks really, really bizarre and empty and just not like Emily at all. It's also far too thin. It looks like she's sort of lost lots of weight due to a horrible illness or something, which isn't very nice, especially for kids. Also, her face looks a little bit like a bottom, doesn't it? Except it's just got a face on it rather than, well, something less mentionable. Yeah, it just doesn't look right to me. And uh, it's quite rare these days that Hornby haven't made them for a good many years, which is a good thing, don't get me wrong. But it does mean that the price has shot up now. So if you want to get a Hornby Emily, they're very, very expensive. I don't know how well they run, probably not that well because the single wheelers from Triang always were a bit problematic. Um, yeah, just not a good model at all, in my opinion. Let me know, have you ever seen a Hornby Emily? Have you ever owned one? What were they like? Were they any good? Am I being unfair or am I right? Are they actually quite rubbish? Either way, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very, very much for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what your favorites were. And if you want to, let me know which you would love to get that you haven't got already or which you would never want to buy. Maybe it'll be Emily, maybe it'll be something else. For the time being though, thank you once again for watching. Have a great week and I will see you very, very soon. All right, cheers everybody.